Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So some of you wanted me to do a video comparing Rust to other languages like Go and C, but I haven't thought of enough to talk about. These languages all have their advantages and disadvantages, and depending on what you're developing and how you like to program, you might find some more appealing than others. But in this video, I want to talk to you about the problems I have with the Go programming language. Specifically, I'll be going over five problems because it just so happens I only came up with five. So I've been using Go for various projects for about a year now, and I've come across a lot of issues with it. Now these issues doesn't mean I'm saying Go is a bad language, and it doesn't mean I'm not going to use Go in the future. It's just things that makes me want to use the language less because it doesn't feel as nice to program in. And I'll be going through these issues from least impactful to more impactful ones that I think could be genuine issues. So let's get into it. So the first issue I have is the weird syntax. And it's not really that it's weird, it's more like it's unnecessary or it's contradicting. Like how you have to use colon equals to initialize the variable for the first time. Like how in the function header, tuples have to have brackets around them, but in the return statement, tuples must not have any brackets around them. Or how you have to use commas and periods to indicate a new line. Or how you can't have commas in a struct definition, but you have to have commas in a struct instantiation. And other weird syntax. But to be honest, these aren't that bad. We can look over them and it doesn't really affect you as a developer. The next issue I have is its string and formatting APIs. Go follows the same conventions as C, where it uses %s, %d, %c to format its strings and print them out. But honestly, I think they shouldn't have kept it like this. There's no real reason to keeping it like this. And a lot of the newer languages provides better facilities for printing out stuff. Say for example, in JavaScript, you can have string interpolation instead of having to list out all the arguments. And even in languages like Python and Rust, they ditch the %s, %d, and %c, and just have a generic curly bracket, so you don't have to keep track of all the different formatting in your head. But again, not really a big deal breaker, it's just things that would make your development life a lot easier. The third thing is no generics. Now, I know this was a conscious decision made by the creators because they wanted to keep the language simple, so they didn't add stuff like macros and generics. And to be fair, it doesn't affect you that much if you haven't worked with generics before. He can pretty much do everything using interfaces, it's just in a different fashion. Now the fourth one is namespacing. Now this one's going to be affecting you a little bit more as a developer because it dictates the structure of your code. So one thing you can't do is you can't reference packages inside packages. So if your package has more than one struct and you want to write constructor functions for these structs, then you would have really long function names because you don't want to have the conflicts. But again, you can work around this by using a builder pattern. So instead of having a function, you have methods that set the individual fields. Okay, so before we get into our last issue, I want to have an honorable mention, and that's the GoPath variable. So when Go was initially released, they forced you to use the GoPath environment variable for all your development, and you had to develop inside your GoPath. And this was really tedious for a lot of people, it caused a lot of problems. But fortunately, in recent Go releases, they no longer require that and you can just write a go.mod file for all your dependencies and configuration. Okay, so the last problem, and I think this is the most important problem, is Go's error handling. So error handling in Go is explicit. You have to manually check errors with if statements, just like in C. Now on paper, this seems like a really good idea. This way we never have to worry about unhandled errors like with exceptions in other languages. But in reality, it's much more complicated. So in Go, a function usually returns two values as a tuple. The first one being the value you actually want, and the second one indicating any errors that occurred. For each of these functions, you have to write a corresponding if statement that checks if the error is not nil. And if it's not nil, then we know an error occurred and we need to handle it. Whether it's returning it to the caller for the caller to handle, or logging it out to the console for the user to see. Now again, this sounds like a good idea, but in practice, all the if statements are really unnecessary because most of the time what you really want to do is to return the error for the caller to handle. So what this ends up accomplishing is segregating all your logic code with really long if statements. On top of this, the errors that you receive as a caller doesn't really tell much at face value because they're hidden behind the error interface. And this error interface only has one method that returns the error message, which is a string which again, doesn't tell you much. So if you want to know the exact error that occurred, Go lets us use a type switch statement that lets us check what the type of the error is. But this makes our code even harder to read because now we have a switch statement inside of our if statement and we've indented like four times. So what are some solutions to this? Well, we can take a look at how other languages approach this problem. For example, in Java, JavaScript, and Python, 
they all have a similar approach. In Java, the function will return only one value instead of two, and any errors that occur, the function will throw an exception, and the caller will need to handle that exception using a try and catch block. Inside a try and catch block, we can call any function we want that throws an exception, and then we can handle it gracefully. In addition, by stating the exceptions that can be thrown in the function header, we can call any function we want inside that function and delegate any exceptions thrown to the caller instead of having to handle it inside our function. This reduces the amount of code we need to write substantially because we don't need to write any error handling code and can delegate everything to the caller. And as a result, the logic of our code is much easier to understand. There are some exceptions to this, however. Now the error is kind of hidden and the developer might not know that a certain function throws in a certain exception and not code for that exception. So let's take a look at a different language that handles this differently, like Rust or Haskell. In Rust, errors are more explicit than in Java. We still have one return value instead of two, but now the return value wraps the actual value that we want around the error value. So if we want to get the actual value, we have to unwrap it. This forces us to handle the error in case we don't get a value back. Now at first this might seem like the same problem we had with Go, where we have lots of error handling code, but Rust lets us omit all this code using the question mark operator. If the functions we call in our function returns the same result type as our own function, then we can use the question mark operator on them. This way, if an error occurs, it would return that error immediately to the caller. And if it doesn't occur, then we can continue running our function as normal. This is similar to Java, where we state the exceptions thrown by the function and delegate everything to its caller. Now, could Go implement something like this? Probably but it would probably also break their philosophy of keeping the language simple. But I hope they do come up with something like this and something for figuring out exactly what type of error was returned because otherwise coding in Go would seem really tedious to me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. Let me know your thoughts on Go and some other languages you've worked with and I'll see you guys in the next one.